students welcome back in the last lecture on india's foreign policy we discussed about the factors influencing india's foreign policy in this lecture i will explain you the basic principles of india's foreign policy so without wasting any time let's start with it the first principle is non alignment as we have already discussed in the last lecture that india opted for non alignment because of cold war tension in international system you can watch that video if you have not yet seen that uh, let's move further and talk about the features of non alignment so the features include first one not to involve in the international disputes second to be aloof from military pacts now during the cold war time period the world was divided into two power blocks america had nato seato cento as their military uh, military alliances and soviet union had warsaw pact so the non aligned countries it decided that they will not be the part of any of those military alliances the third one not to join any power block fourth have faith in peaceful coexistence now this is something which is against the realistic theory of international politics as you have done earlier when we talk about the realism they believe in the warfare they believe in the prevalence of uh, the international conflict however the believers of non alignment they had a firm faith in the peaceful coexistence the next feature is non alignment does not mean indifferent to world politics it doesn't mean that one will be neutral they will not be participant to the world problems and the tensions the non aligned group it's actively participated in the international system and it tried to ease out the tensions between the two power blocks coming to the second principle it is international cooperation now solving the international problems through mutual cooperation uh, was one of the one of, is one of the main principles that india believes in also it believes that through international cooperation the nations can fulfill their national interest so one need not go for warfare one need not in get involved in the conflicts so rather through the cooperation the interests can be fulfilled coming to the third principle faith in panchshil now these principles of panchshil they were chalked out by pandit jawaharlal nehru and chinese premier mr chow and liu during an agreement on territory of tibet in 1954 the principles are as follows now first of all when we to sorry when we talk about the panchil panch means five so they are five principles the first one is mutual respect for each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty in simple words it meant that one will not attack the other state it will not cause a threat to the sovereignty or the independence of the other state second one non aggression third non interference in the internal affairs of the other states fourth equality and mutual cooperation fifth to adopt the policy of peaceful coexistence now these as i told you these principles were signed in 1954 and china attacked india in 1962 so it means that these principles were not followed by china however these principles they were very well appreciated by the various countries as it advocated world peace now coming to the next principle opposed to military alliances though in the present day world there is just one military group that is nato but during the world war time period a lot of significance was given to the military alliances as i told you uh, told told you earlier however india never became part of these military alliances as it uh, all remained away from the power politics india is a very strong advocate of peace and military alliances they stand against this principle now moving further the fifth principle is support for disarmament now disarmament means liquidation of existing stockpiles of weapons through mutual agreements and treaties so that tension reduces at the international level India it is a firm supporter of disarmament and it is also a member of 18 member disarmament commission formed by United Nations further in 1996 India as a part of 21 countries submitted a program of action to conference of disarmament for a phase for a phased elimination of nuclear weapons from 1996 to 2020 so this was the this is the role which is played by indian state for the disarmament So next principle is to develop the relations with east 
Now, since independence, India has been trying to develop its relations with the Western countries. But with the passage of time, it started focusing towards East. India believes that if the economic ties between the Eastern states strengthen, then they can emerge as a strong economic power. And this is the reason India has been strengthening its ties with the ASEAN, that is, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. In addition, India initiated Look East policy during the government of Prime Minister Narasimha Rao, which was later on followed by the succeeding government. Further, in 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi initiated Act East policy. Now, if we talk about the difference between both these policies, while the Look East policy is primarily focused on the South East Asian countries, Act East policy focuses both on South East and east asian countries so the next principle is faith in united nations india has always shown abiding faith in united nations it was one of the founding members of united nations and has always rendered its services when called for under united nation flag india several times have pulled its armed forces for maintaining peace at international level for instance india has taken part in 43 peacekeeping missions with a contribution of more than 180000 troops further india has been an active member of various united nation organizations as well as agencies for instance in 1953 vijaya lakshmi pandit was elected as the first elected woman president of united nation general assembly also till present three members from india have been appointed as judges of international court of justice In November 2016, Vinod Rai was appointed as chairman of UN panel of external affairs. Also, India is one of the main contributors of United Nations regular budget. From the participation of India in United Nations, we can say that it has a very strong faith in United Nations. The next principle is use of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. Now, India is a nuclear state. but it has it is committed to use the atomic energy for peaceful purposes only india was not participatory to the treaties like npt that is non proliferation treaty and ctbt comprehensive test ban treaty as it did not allow the non nuclear states to have atomic energy india went for the nuclear testing in may 1974 and then in may 1998 as it required the nuclear energy for its security however India has never used its nuclear power against any state. The next principle is opposition to colonialism and imperialism. Now, uh, we all know that India has itself suffered in the hands of the colonial power. So it has always rendered its support to colonies. India co-sponsored the landmark 1960 declaration on granting of independence to colo uh, to colonial country, uh, countries and peoples which proclaimed the need of the end uh, need to end colonialism in all forms the next principle is opposition to racialism india uh, has been against apartheid and racialism india was one of the nations to raise the issue of apartheid in south africa in 1946 It also played a major role in the formation of subcommittee against the apartheid in general assembly. In addition, India was one of the signatories to convention on elimination of all forms of racial discrimination in 1965. And so the 11th principle of India's foreign policy is respect for human rights. India has been a very strong supporter of the protection of human rights. The inclusion of fundamental rights in the Indian Constitution is a testimony of the same. In 1947-48, India participated in the drafting of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Further, India has also constituted National Human Rights Commission and the various state human rights commissions to protect the human rights of people residing in its territory. In addition, India is also a member of Human Rights Council established by United Nations. The next principle is opposition to terrorism. Now terrorism has been an important concern of United Nations. India being a sufferer in the hands of terrorism has always raised its voice against it. In United Nations, 
India has been demanding for a comprehensive convention on international terrorism to enhance international cooperation and effectiveness of United Nations to tackle the problem of terrorism. In 1996, India prepared the, prepared the draft for the same. The next principle is cooperation between the Asian and African countries. India's foreign policy also talks about enhancing the cooperation between the Asian and the African countries. Many of these countries had been the victim of colonialism and the exploitation thereof. These countries have many common problems, hence they try to search the solution for the same collectively. The next principle is developing friendly relations with the neighboring countries. Being a peace-loving state, India has always tried to improve its relations with the neighboring countries. India has made many bilateral and multilateral relations with them. For instance, we all know that we have very bitter relations with Pakistan. But still many a times India has tried to improve the relations with it. For instance, the Shimla Agreement of 1972, the starting up of the Samjhota Express and so on. Similarly, Bangladesh is the largest, largest recipient of India's line of credit with a total of $8 billion committed for the infrastructure development. Also, for the 11th five-year plan of Bhutan, that was from 2013 to 18, the government of India extended development assistance of rupees 5,000 crores to Bhutan. For the India and Myanmar, they are also trying to expand their cooperation in the energy sector. Now, moving to the next principle, it is demand for new international economic order. Uh, now, friends, first of all, let us talk about what is international economic order. It means that the prevalent economic system at the international level. India is demanding a change in the same because the present economic system is a biased one and is more favorable to the developed states. Even the international financial institutions like IMF and World Bank, they are controlled by the de developed states. So India is asking for a change in the economic order so that the poor and the developing nations can also benefit from the same. Now moving to the next uh, principle, it is the demand for a permanent seat in the Security Council. Now India again and again has been demanding a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. And for this, it gives the following reasons. The first one, India is the largest democratic state of the world. Second, India has always rendered its services to the United Nations whenever they have asked for that. Third, the Asian, uh, state, the Asian states, they are not given proper representation in the Security Council. It has the majority of the population of the world. However, there is only one Asian state in the Security Council, that is China. Further, India is a very strong military power. And the next one, there are many big states which are supporting India's claim for the permanent seat, like Russia, France, and Japan. And many other states are also supporting India's, uh, India's position in the Security Council. And so, so students, all these were the principles of India's foreign policy. Hope the topic is clear to you. Thank you so much. Have a great learning.